space is big. Traveling distances are huge, and getting spacecraft from one place to another costs a lot of time. One of the fastest spacecraft launched from Earth was NASA's New Horizons, which visited Pluto in 2015. In January 2006, the probe left Earth at a speed of 85,000 km per hour. Our own moon is nearly 400,000 km away. Given the speed of the unmanned New Horizons probe, this would be a small 4 hours of traveling. This may seem short, but astronomically our moon is really close to Earth. A good deal further would be Mars. If the New Horizons traveled in a straight line to Mars, at its closest distance, it would take 39 days to get there. That's a long time to spend on a spaceship, but getting to the edge of our solar system would take even longer. For the New Horizons, to reach a destination at the edge of our solar system, 9 years had to elapse. The stars are even further away from us. The nearest star is 40 trillion kilometers away. For the New Horizons probe to get there, it would need 80,000 years. If you want to travel to the stars, it is clear you gotta go fast. Much faster than what we have achieved so far. In our universe, however, there is a speed limit. The speed of light is a universal constant. According to physics, particles with the property of mass will always travel slower than 299,792,458 meters per second. This is an amazing speed. At the speed of light, you could circle the Earth seven times in just one second. But as we discussed, space is quite a lot bigger than the Earth. Light is fast here on Earth, but in space it quickly becomes limited. To the moon at the speed of light is just 1.26 seconds. To Mars is 3 minutes. To Pluto is 5 hours. This is a significant improvement for interplanetary travel, but interstellar travel still means a journey of 4 years to the nearest stars. To resolve this problem, science fiction writers often come up with a variety of cheats to travel faster than light. One of them was Star Trek, with its infamous warp drive. Star Trek warp drives zip around the galaxy at several hundreds of times the speed of light. But how does this warp drive work? To even start on that, let's take a look at Einstein's theory of relativity. One of Einstein's most revolutionary ideas was that space isn't just empty, but functions more like a field in which all matter and energy is embedded. This field, which is called the space-time continuum, can bend by matter and energy, depending on its quantity. A massive object causes a dip in the field, which we perceive as gravity. The more massive an object, the more it will affect the continuum. If you introduce negative mass, the rules reverse, and the curvature becomes negative as well. A negative mass object would cause a hill instead of a dip to form in the continuum. Now this is the sandbox for warp theory in its basic form. Interesting, right? At least, that's what Mexican Star Trek fan Michael Alcubierre must have thought. He decided the Star Trek warp drive was actually a pretty legitimate idea. And in May 1994, he released a paper titled The Warp Drive, Hyperfast Travel Within General Relativity, in which he constructed a warp field within the mathematical language of Einstein's relativity, which would allow you to move faster than the speed of light. Here is how it works. Alcubierre developed a space-time description that describes the volume of flat spacetime enclosed in a bubble of extreme curvature. By using positive mass, you create a downwards curvature in front of the ship where space contracts. To complete the war bubble, you will need to use negative mass behind your vessel to create a spatial expansion there. As a result, the bubble will be pushed and pulled by spacetime itself, moving at speeds only limited by the intensity of the warp field. Speeds far greater than the speed of light are easily achievable in theory by this. It is important to note that the speed of light isn't violated here. This applies only to mass, energy and information traveling through space. However, according to relativity, there is no speed limit for two relative parts of space traveling. For example, take cosmic inflation. Some very distant galaxies from us are moving away from us faster than the speed of light due to the expansion of space. Even if the galaxies are relatively still in their local frames of reference, a starship inside the warp bubble is carried along for the ride. The ship is stationary relative to the space inside the bubble, but the space it is in is moving faster than the speed of light. 
However, there are a few problems with the design of this. There are quite a few asterisks on the Alcubia drive, as well as on relativity. First off, when you reverse engineer the theory, you find you will need to produce a ring of negative energy around the ship. However, this might not be possible on large enough scales. And we can only create negative pressure on quantum scales via the Kashmir effect. But on the scale needed for the warp engine to function, you'd probably need some sort of negative mass exotic matter. Another possible catch is that the extreme curvature might roast the interior of the bubble with severe Hawking radiation, though this could possibly be countermeasured. A bigger problem is that some of the negative mass energy would need to be outside of the warp bubble, which means it wouldn't be tagged along for the ride. Instead, it would be left behind. A possible solution to this would be to lay out a path ahead of time sort of like a warp highway, but the first trip will have to be made at some light speed. Another problem is that the warp drive at significant fractions of the speed of light would also require active shielding to prevent collisions with interstellar particles and gas and such, caught in the warp field. Finally, when Alcubierre designed the warp drive, he figured it would take a lot of negative energy to power the drive. In fact, significantly more than all the positive energy in our universe. Later refinements brought this down to the mass equivalent of approximately Jupiter. Even further refinements of the warp field geometry brought this down even more. If you thicken the warp field walls, you can drive on just the mass of the moon. This is still unrealistically much of fuel. But if you were to rapidly oscillate the warp field, whereby the intensity of the energy is oscillated, thus very fast the alternately increased and then decreased repeatedly, since there is no limit to the speed of spatial expansion and contraction, you would oscillate it at faster than light speeds, resulting in you softening the space-time through higher dimensional effects. This all sounds horrifically complicated and god believe me it is, but it brings down the required energy to mere kilograms. Now, all this research and stuff inspired in around 2003 NASA's EagleWorks laboratory to hire Dr. Harold White to work on the Alcubia drive. After much work he managed to not only reduce the mass energy further still, but he also managed to illustrate the potential feasibility of the concept. And this is what he came up with. This is the IXS Enterprise, a piece of art revealed by Dr. White of what an actual Alcubia warp ship would look like. Note the two rings to generate both the contraction and the expansion of space near the ship. Where the original Alcubia drive was impractical and uncontrollable, White's revision drive was bordering the limits of possibility and very much controllable. In theory, we can now create a warp field that 1. softens space-time, which is very stiff 2. creates a spherical-shaped warp bubble, effectively separating the inside from the outside of space 3. can create a flat region of space-time inside the bubble, in which matter or a spaceship can be held still in its local space-time frame of reference, that is, inside the bubble 4. make the bubble push itself into a slightly higher dimensional space-time, a hyperdrive Five, Multiply the bubble speed as a result of the above. 6. Allow the drive to exceed light speed by screening away spacetime dilation and inertia. And 7. Do this with only dozens of kilograms worth of negative energy. The hyperspace concept is something not from Star Trek, but from Star Wars, where they jump into a higher dimension where the laws of physics are different and they can travel faster than the speed of light. As the Alcubierre white warp drive pushes further into hyperspace, you will increasingly cease to interact electromagnetically with anything and everything in our universe. This means that the possibility exists if you put your warp settings high enough, you could break away from our physical four-dimensional plane and move into a higher dimension. This, however, reintroduces the problem of time dilation as fancy math reviews anytime you go into hyperspace. As you can see, there is nothing simpler than a pulsating warp drive. For reasons that include among others me wanting to rip my hairs out, I have not included any of the related mathematics to White and Alcubierre's theories. However, Eagle Labs has since suspended most of their research towards the Alcubierre drive, partially due to their inconclusive results. This does definitely suggest that we're definitely still a long way from faster than light transportation. Eagle Labs didn't give up there though. They also attempted to create a powerful faster-than-light thruster, the M-Drive, a thruster capable of infinite fuel-less propulsion. This concept, however, has been proven impossible, and following this setback, they suspended further research into the Alcubierre drive as well. On the other hand, sound evidence of the possibility of warp drive is found in cosmic inflation, the expansion of space, the Kashmir effect, the creation of negative mass on quantum scales, relativity, the distorting of space-time, the Chung-Friese math of higher dimensions, 
and the existence of gravitational waves and others. So does this mean the warp drive is actually feasible? Both the math and the experiments show that there is definitely something going on. So there is a good chance. However, it is a long way from actually being built. We have a good deal of progress to make before we can actually make, build and operate an LQBR warp device. Eagleworks is aware of this, which is why they for the moment have suspended their research. Right now we nearly have the technology to make a warp field, but it's far too dangerous and risky to attempt that with this level of knowledge. The LQBR wide warp drive is a promising concept, but until further developments are made, it is just that. This video was a pain. I'll be honest, it was a pain, but it definitely paid off. Hard as it was to research, comprehend and summarize the concept, I hope I still pulled off an educating and entertaining video for you all. This has been Yeezy Science with a headache and see you in the next video.